Napoleon had come a long way since he left Corsica as a young man, facing memorable battles in many different settings where he challenged kings and generals and achieved many victories. Napoleon was now Emperor of France. Thus, he controlled much of continental Europe in the early 19th century. At its peak, the well-known First French Empire had 130 departments and ruled over 44 million subjects with a huge military presence in Germany, Italy, Austria, and Prussia. France became an enviable military power, but there were still enemies capable of challenging its sovereignty. Among them were Great Britain and the giant Russian Empire, which constantly sent armies to Germany and Prussia to instigate revolts among the local population and drive the French out of the region. On November 21st, 1806, Napoleon issued the Berlin Decree, prohibiting European nations from trading with Great Britain. The goal was to hurt Britain's coffers and weaken its economy by creating the so-called Continental System. But the decree was not well received by the French-dominated European nations. The smuggling of goods grew exponentially, causing more economic problems for France than for Britain. In February 1807, the bloody and inconclusive Battle of Eylau took place in the East Prussian region where Napoleon's large army faced the Imperial Russian army, commanded by the German-born general Levin von Benigsen. Early in the battle, a frontal attack by Napoleon failed, with catastrophic losses. To reverse the situation, the Emperor launched a massive cavalry charge against the Russians. This gave the French right flank enough time to organize and counterattack their enemies. The French forced the Russians to retreat after a night of combat, but the death toll on both sides was a high price to pay, and the myth of Napoleon's invincibility was badly shaken. According to estimates by German historians, the French suffered more than 29,000 casualties, either killed or seriously wounded. French revenge would come months later, on June the 14th, in the famous Battle of Friedland. Napoleon again faced General Benigsen, but this time, the French were prepared. With superior numbers, and faced with the vulnerability of the Russians who had their backs to the Alle River, Napoleon concluded that the moment had come and ordered a massive attack against the Russian left flank. The French attack pushed the Russian army back, pressing them against the river. Unable to withstand the pressure, the Russians broke their formations and began to flee down the river. Many drowned. The Russian army suffered terrible casualties at Friedland, losing over 40% of its soldiers on the battlefield. Napoleon's overwhelming victory was enough to conclude the War of the Fourth Coalition. Emperor Alexander I of Russia sought a peace negotiation and joined the continental system against Great Britain. The treaties of Tilsit were created. The first one was signed by Napoleon and Alexander I at a meeting on a raft in the middle of the Niemen River. The first thing Alexander said to Napoleon was, I hate the English as much as you do. He probably wanted to fortify his ties with the French Emperor. The second treaty was signed with Prussia on July the 9th. The lands lost by Prussia were converted into the new Kingdom of Westphalia, ruled by Jerome, Napoleon's brother. The humiliating treatment of Prussia at Tilsit fueled a deep and bitter antagonism, which grew worse as the Napoleonic era progressed. Napoleon continued his efforts to prevent countries on the European continent from trading with Britain. But the Kingdom of Portugal, headed by King John VI, defied French orders by resuming diplomatic and trade relations with the British. As punishment, Napoleon sent 24,000 French soldiers to invade Portugal. Commanded by General Jean Andos Junon, the French had help from the Spanish who had been looking for a pretext to wage war against the Portuguese. To escape the French, John VI, accompanied by the entire royal family and a large retinue of nobles, embarked for Brazil, abandoning the Portuguese people to their fate. To explain himself to the people, Joan ordered posters to be put up in the streets, stating that his departure was inevitable, recommending that everyone remain calm and orderly and not resist the invaders. 
With Portugal secured, Napoleon focused his attention on the Kingdom of Spain, which was already his ally, but was showing ambition to expand its influence and could be a threat in the future. In 1808, Napoleonic France occupied Spain, and Napoleon placed his older brother, Joseph Bonaparte, on the Spanish throne. The Spanish people did not accept the French occupation peacefully, beginning the period of the Peninsular War, which lasted six years and significantly affected the French armies. French defeats at the Battle of Bailen and the Battle of Vimiero forced Napoleon to personally intervene in the fighting. Under the Emperor's command, the French army inflicted several crushing defeats against the Spanish forces. On December 4, 1808, Napoleon marched his 80,000 troops into the city of Madrid. The British, who were supporting the Spanish, quickly withdrew from Spain after one last resistance at the Battle of La Coruña in January 1809. Napoleon's empire was far from peaceful. That same year of 1809, the Austrians moved in for a new offensive against France. Early in the morning of April the 10th, the new Austrian army invaded Bavaria. The first Austrian attack surprised the French. Napoleon was still in Paris when he learned of the invasion. This was the beginning of the War of the Fifth Coalition. Napoleon came up with a plan to isolate the Austrians, winning a major victory at the Battle of Eckmull. Then, the French marched into the city of Vienna, captured for the second time. Between May 21st and 22nd, the Battle of Aspern and Essling took place. It was quite violent, where the continuous Austrian artillery bombardment forced Napoleon to withdraw his forces. It was Napoleon's first defeat in a major battle, which caused excitement in many parts of Europe. It proved that he could be defeated in battle. After six weeks of planning, Napoleon commanded a new offensive in the biggest battle of his career so far, the Battle of Wagram. Napoleon crossed the Danube River with 172,000 troops during the night of July the 4th and attacked the Austrian army of 136,000 men. The French hit the right and center of the Austrian forces. The momentum of the battle changed and Napoleon launched an offensive along the entire enemy line, which split in half and made the Austrian position untenable. The Austrians tried to retreat but were pursued and defeated a few days later at the Battle of Zanaim, where they surrendered and asked for an armistice, ending the war. With the end of the war, Napoleon returned to France, where he experienced a terrible dilemma. He needed an heir to take over the vast empire he had conquered, but during the entire time they were married, his wife Josephine did not bear him a single child. On January the 10th, 1810, Napoleon divorced Josephine, and sought a new wife with a noble lineage. He found a beautiful 18-year-old candidate named Marie-Louise, the Duchess of Parma and daughter of Emperor Francis II of Austria. To formalize the recent alliance with Austria through a family connection, Napoleon married Marie-Louise on April 1, 1810, making her the second Empress of the French. Marie lived up to her husband's expectations giving birth to a baby boy on March the 20th, 1811, known as Napoleon II, and receiving the symbolic title of King of Rome. Napoleon's happiness at having an heir was overshadowed by a new threat from Eastern Europe. The Russian nobility demanded that Emperor Alexander I break his alliance with France. Tensions between the two powers increased with Russian violations of the continental system. Napoleon was informed that Russia was planning a new alliance with Britain and an invasion of Poland. Furious at the breach of the peace agreement signed at Tilsit, Napoleon expanded his army to a total of 450,000 men. Ignoring advice against an invasion into the Russian interior, he set out on a new campaign. Napoleon had achieved impressive victories against all adversaries who dared to challenge him but the decision to invade Russia would bring unimaginable consequences for the French Emperor.